Another important use of masking and rotoscoping is color grading. For example, maybe you want to color grade one part of a shot separate from the rest of the shot. Of course, Resolve has an advanced color grading tab, and this does support some masking and rotoscoping functions. However, it's not quite as powerful as what you have available inside Fusion. By the same token, you can color grade in Fusion, but it's not nearly as advanced as a color tab. So how do you combine the best of both worlds? How do you combine the masking and rotoscoping in Fusion with the color grading of the color tab? The trick is to use multiple media outs. Let's see how that works. So I'm on video 18 now, and we have a new shot. Perhaps we want to color grade the bridge separate from the rest of the shot. I'll go ahead and make a second media out. And that's under I.O. Media Out. To make things a bit more simple, we can also have multiple media ends. In this case, because we only have one clip, the media end 2 will actually pull in the same shot. But it's a quick way to have two iterations of the same timeline. Go ahead and make that. Add Tool, I.O., Media End. I want to cut out the bridge, so I'll go ahead and add a new mask. I'll use a polygon and cut out the bridge. I'll do this fairly quickly. Feel free to spend as much time as you need to to make a nice mask. Close that and very quickly adjust some of the tangent handles to get the curvature better. Of course, the more time you spend on this, the better it will be. So I'm just doing this very quickly. All right, let's say it's good enough. I'll go ahead and connect the polygon to the media end to effect mask input. Then connect the output of media end two to media out two. I'll look at the output of media out two. Not the best mask in the world, but you get the idea. Now, if I go back and look at media out one, I still get the entire shot. So how does this work with color? By default, the color tab is using media in one. What I can do though is add a new source, adjust that separately, and then recombine media in two with media in one. So here in the node view, I'll right mouse button click and add a new source. That will use media in two by default. So what I can do here is add a new corrector node if I want to color correct that. In order to take advantage of both the RGB and the alpha, I'll have to connect the source to the RGB input and also the alpha input. Click drag a pipe or a string to connect. I'll disconnect this output here. Just click drag that pipe off. And then add one more node. Here, in order to get these two nodes back together, I'll go to Add Node Layer Mixer. And just to make sure that the media in 2 is actually working with the alpha, I'll go ahead and quickly change the color. I'll just tint it with a purplish gain. Now I'll connect the output of the media in 1 to this layer mixer first. It's going to be the background. Then connect the output of media in 2, which will be the foreground. And then connect the output of the layer mixer to the final output. Then you'll see the correct result, the color altered bridge on top of the full shot. So again, the trick is to use multiple media outs, add additional sources, and then recombine them. Then if you go back to Fusion and select each media out, and notice that they have an index. Index 0 and index 1. And that's how the color tab understands which source is which. One thing that's a bit tricky is remembering the order of events inside Resolve. For example, the result of this composite inside the color tab is passed back to the timeline. However, the pink bridge composite is not passed back to Fusion. Remember that Fusion uses the original footage. However, if you decide to use color tools inside Fusion, that actually gets passed onto the color tab and eventually back to the timeline. So you could actually color grade inside Fusion and the color tab and have the combined result. Now there's actually a third way to approach masking and color grading, and that's to take advantage of the layering power of the timeline. Let's give that a try. I'm going to go ahead and close this project and reopen it for a fresh start. And I'll come back in a moment. I've reopened video 18, and I'm on the Edit tab. The first step I'll take is adding another iteration of the clip on the timeline. 
First I'll make some more room by click dragging this bar down. Then I'll just drag that clip from the clip list down into the timeline. So each clip will get its own network inside Fusion. So I'll put my time slider over the second clip, the new clip, go to Fusion. And that's the network I have for that second clip. Here I can do things like mask. I'll quickly add a mask. This time I'll add a shape mask, like a triangle, connected to the media in. Then I can go ahead and add a color corrector and then tint it and get a similar result as before. That's fed back into the timeline. So this clip has the pinkish triangle cut out, whereas the original clip is original. But now if I click drag this and drop it on top, I have basic compositing functionality right here on the timeline. So here we can take advantage of the fact that each clip has its own network, and with each network you can do whatever you want. And one great advantage of using a program like Fusion within Resolve is there's usually more than one way to approach a problem, and you can find a method that suits you best. We're now going to move on to a new topic, and that's motion tracking, and we'll do that in the next video.